I would memorize those hardest things right before the test, like, like memorized in my mind. And one of the hardest things probably on this test is just memorizing the formula of a derivative. And then I would write it at the top of my test as soon as the teacher gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Probably a good thing to do, right? So derivatives, we remember, are these things which are functions. Okay, a derivative is a function. And its input is a function. So it's sort of like a strange thing to, to think about. Uh, you take a function and then you do something to it and get another function. So the input is a function and the output is a function, which is really fun in sort of an inception sort of way. Uh, and by definition, it is this. Conceptually, what we're doing here is we're looking at the slope of the secant line at some point x in our original function's domain. And this function that we get out, that's the slope of the secant line, the function we get out tells us the slope of our original function at this point. Because that secant line, the average is being taken over reduced, even smaller and smaller uh, intervals. So this is a nice slope function. If, big if, this limit exists. And last time, we actually started with a nice little catalog of functions to go through. And we didn't quite get to everything. Um, but I think we can, yeah, seven minutes, we can definitely go through some functions here. Let's see, the one we didn't get to was the root. Yes? Uh, h goes to zero. Wow, yes. <clears throat> yes. I'm trying to just go really fast here. Thank you. Uh, how's, how am I doing? Do you have a list back there already? After class, just tell me the list. It's okay, I can take it. That probably wasn't my only mistake today. That's what I'm saying. So if you have a list, I'd love to know. Uh, yeah, it would be fun, fun to talk about. Okay, and everything's spelled right on the board, which is, there's only two words, for example, so we're good. Okay, that's my biggest problem usually. Okay. So we did not do the square root last time, right? right? Do you want to see that one first? OK. So I kind of did this procedurally last time. Meaning, you know, I would give us a function. Like this one's not so, not so complicated. And then procedurally, I stepped through doing this. Right? And I think that's really just the way to go about finding derivatives when you don't know sort of the patterns yet that exist. Um, and there was a question after class, which I'll get to uh, after this one. So to sort of curtail those questions as well, this is how I want you to find limits on the test. This. Not citing some theorem which comes in a couple chapters and then spitting out the the derivative. Lots of people right now can tell me what the derivative of this is without even doing what we're about to do. But we're going to do it. So here we go. Square root x, procedurally. We need to find everything that is in this quotient, this difference quotient. We have the original function, so that's that. That's great. We have h, essentially, because it's just some number that's going to become nothing. We don't have this. This is the very first thing you should do when finding any limit is write down the composition of function with x plus h. Second, you write down this quotient. If you want to put in the limit from the beginning, you can. You don't need to, though. You can just sort of slap it on at the end after you've reduced. So we're going to take this minus this. All divided by h. Now your goal is to try and simplify this beast into something that you know the limit of. Not always the easiest thing. Just out of curiosity, does anybody know what simplifying step we use here? 
Sorry? Square roots, we're going to use square roots, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. And do something that's going to make this kind of messier. Um, here we go. Do you remember this thing called uh, conjugates? Yes, I see. I see it. Yes. If I gave you, you know, something like this, a root minus another root, and I said, what's its conjugate? Could you give me that? No. It's really easy. You ready? You write these things down exactly as they are, uh, x, don't put that on the list, thank you. <laughs> the only thing you do is you change this sign. And we're going to do that on top and bottom. And the reason we're going to do that on top and on bottom, well, is because this fraction is equal to 1. This is just one. So multiplication by one does nothing, right? Okay. Why is this so cool? Well, this is so cool because conjugates, when multiplied together, result in perfect squares. When you distribute this, you get this times this, right? It's the square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus h. Together, that's the square root of x plus h squared. The square root undoes the square root. You also get minus this times this. Well, that's just x. You also get middle terms, which are positive root x plus h times root x. And you get minus root x plus h times root x. Those are the same, but they have the opposite signs. So when you write them down, they go the way of the dodo bird. Gone. Conjugates are awesome. They're just really great. In the bottom, we haven't really done a thing. We're just going to leave it like this. Because something really nice happens right now. x minus x is nothing. What happens with this factor of h on top and bottom? Well, they cancel out. Right? This is gone with this. This cancels with this. And we're left with just one up top. 1 divided by root x plus h plus root x. This is fantastic. Limit law is time. Can you tell me the limit as h goes to 0 of the top? Yes. What is it? 1. Can you tell me the limit of the bottom as h goes to 0? 2 roots x. Yes. This goes to 0. The h does. So this becomes square root of x plus another square root of x. That doesn't depend on h at all. Treat it like a constant, right? So on bottom, we just have two roots of x, because h has gone to nothing. And that's the derivative. If you wanted to know the slope of this guy at any input value x, all you got to do is plug in that input value here, and that will be the slope for one minute after. So I only got through one derivative. Um, 